Well, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Christian Bond from uh, Asahinet International. Uh, the presentation uh, today is on faculty-focused mo modules on Sakai. And we have uh, Gail Hunger and Trish, Trisha Gordon uh, that will be uh, doing the co-presenting here. Um, please note that uh, all attendees are muted for this session here. So uh, we are trying to keep the level of noise to the minimum here. So only Gail will be uh, having the control of the, the voice. Uh, if you have any questions during the course of the presentation, please uh, add them to the questions the little box you have at the right corner there, the right side. Uh, and just put them in. And uh, Trish and I will be able to go through these uh, these these questions as as we move forward, and then we'll uh, we'll uh, answer them as needed. Uh, also, the session is being recorded, so uh, it'll also be available at the later date on the uh, YouTube Epario channel. And if it, anyone has any issue right now with the video or, or the audio, please let us know through the little questions box right there, and we'll uh, we'll uh, address this right away. So uh, looks like we are okay. So, Gail, it's all yours. Thanks, Christian, and uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Gail Hunger. I work uh, at the, um, the College of Arts and Sciences as an instructional designer. And uh, I created faculty-focused modules when I was at um, a different school, the Continuing Ed, for faculty who were adjunct faculty, and we needed a site to help onboard faculty. Um, this is something that could be used anywhere at the university, but uh, that's my role. And I'm also co-presenting with Trisha Gordon, and I, I let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Trisha Gordon. I am the director for UVA Collab, which is the University of Virginia's instance of Sakai. And we're running uh, Sakai 2.9.1 now here. Um, and delighted to be joining Gail for this presentation. Um, so thanks for being here and uh, look forward to talking with you more at the end. Thanks, Tricia. I'm just trying. Okay. So um, this is um, a discussion about how we work together in our different roles at the institution to build uh, faculty focus modules and we called them faculty focus because the focus is on what was the, what was the information the faculty needed uh, both just in time and to have it uh, there so they could watch things and recordings and have all resources in one place and so in our different roles we'll be talking today about how we work together to create this because we were using Colab as a course site but we were using it more from a um, programmatic or uh, school perspective for how to have one place for faculty to go to get the same information. So the way we began here, um, uh, Trisha and I have been working together for a few years here, more than four or five, and we began in 2011 um, with a technology enhanced learning project and we brought uh, we identified faculty at our school and who wanted to either redesign or create courses using technology enhanced learning and throughout that entire process we had uh, large group meetings and individual consultations with faculty and it was very successful and we had a showcase at the end of the year with over 100 participants uh, coming to the session and after that we you know there was so much interest in it that we had a faculty focus group to think about what what other information do, do faculty need and how could we work with them and um, I worked with Tricia at uh, the central IT office to bring in different speakers to the group and have their, they, they shared their resources in a way and so we we had these faculty focus group meetings with um, identified faculty across the school where they developed and we had discussions for an entire summer about what what do they need when they are starting to teach with us what information do they need how should they get it and then I um, worked with a group at my school I worked with the marketing department I work with the different directors and department heads 
to develop this um, the, these different resources and I'll talk more about that in a minute and then we worked on that for a year and this summer we piloted it. So for each of these the, in the faculty focus we had different um, subjects for each module. We decided to have five modules. Uh, we sort of took maybe a Coursera approach for how to look at them and you know how could they how could we familiarize faculty with the same information what they said was they didn't weren't getting consistent information they needed the following they needed to know how to, how to get prepared they wanted to know more about assessment they wanted to know more about how to engage students with you know in the instruction they wanted to know about all the different technologies that were available and what the usages were and for the online courses we wanted to introduce faculty to what quality online instruction was because these things um, are the school that I was at was was a dispersed model but that said at, at our institution each each school not I'm in arts and sciences they you know faculty still don't have access to all of this information in one place so um, I worked with Trisha on this module in specific and so I thought I'd give this an example is I would consider uh, Tricia as the subject matter expert for course technology at our institution. So I didn't want to replicate what we had done there. I wanted to put it all in one place and she was more my subject matter expert and I acted as instructional designer for these modules. And so she helped me prepare the content which where we wrote scripts and then we, you could see we have a video where the, you know, it's like the Coursera model, like I said. There's five minutes, they, they watch something. There also were resources that I just pointed everybody to, want this, to the place that we do have. Uh, Tricia has UVA Colab information, but this was all uh, like a one-stop place for our faculty. So, and then there's also teaching tips because I was also trying to commit, create a community of practice with faculty, so we had an e-portfolio discussion, we had forums, and then there's access to research here. Tricia, was there anything you wanted to say here? You mean besides dancing my screen around? Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I, I will add some stuff in, a, in a, just a little bit, Gail, so go ahead. Okay, that's fine. And so our collaboration, again, is we, we work together, and I worked together with the, the associate dean at our school to do the, um, the measuring success uh, because we were creating new criteria for faculty. For the getting prepared to teach, I work with the registrar at our school to prepare module content and scripts and the PowerPoint that got ready, and um, then we had someone um, who had who we considered our talent to record the modules and then we recorded the modules and Trisha was our content expert for the technology part. We also um, we met throughout the year Trisha and I to talk about how to organize the site and designing the site so it looked more like a website than it did a course site. Um, so she ha she's going to talk more about that in a minute about how we did that. But we wanted a different look and feel. And I did uh, usability testing on the site with about eight faculty members. Um, and they, you know, looked at look and feel. How, how could they navigate through the site? Did they understand the purpose of the site? Um, and I got a lot of feedback and I was able to make changes so that it was very easy for faculty to use. We also, at our school, people were concerned or interested in doing analytics, and we looked into some scoring functions, but we decided that we weren't going to run this like an HR kind of course, that we were going to get feedback from faculty in a survey, which I'll talk about at the end. I'll talk about some of the feedback that we got. But we did do all of these things to ensure usability of the site and that faculty understood why they were being asked to go there and what they were what what they were actually being asked to do when they went there which was watch the video 
read the content, and take a survey. Oh, I skipped. So, Gail, if I can jump in here for just a minute, and I thought I'm going to break out of the uh, slide. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm going to break out of the slideshow for just a minute and show an actual uh, view of the site and, and what it looks like. Can, can you all see my screen with the, um, the I can site? See it. Okay, great. Well, so um, this is uh, the home page of the site and one of the areas where I was able to provide some um, assistance to Gail in designing the site for faculty. Um, and so one of the things that I was able to do is to go in as the admin and remove some of the other uh, features that normally appear on the home page uh, so that this single site information could consume the entire width of the, of the home page and present this nice overview for faculty coming in. And then, uh, so this is the faculty view of the site and you can see on the left here that Gail has used the lessons tool basically to create these different modules preparing to teach, measuring success, uh, enhanced instruction, course technology, and quality online instruction. And each module has been organized with uh, some information at the beginning and into different sections along with this video content which is was kept short. Very important not to um, overwhelm with too much uh, information uh, in one, on one topic. And then allowing the faculty to go through this on their own, again as Gail mentioned, uh, following kind of the Coursera or MOOC model. Um, so several different modules showing up here, giving faculty a nice introduction to the various tools in the uh, Sakai learning management system, as well as other guidelines for what um, expectations the school has of them for their teaching, et cetera. And so they have a chance to go through all of this. And let me scroll back up to uh, then they would take a feedback survey to um, not only provide feedback about the content but about what they've learned so um, that uh, it could reinforce what they had watched as well as Gail pointed out um, these additional resources that um, are displayed in this menu on the right to for each of these. And as you can see, this is a really nice organization um, for reaching a lot of faculty. And when Gail developed this, um, at the time she was with the School of Continuing and Professional Studies, which has a lot of adjunct and remote faculty. So this allowed all faculty to have access to the same content in the same delivery um, to uh, and 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 therefore to provide consistency of information and access to them. So it's a it's a really good model for for that uh, type of endeavor. And um, I would also add that the relationship and the partnership that that the central IT and the the support for the Sakai Learning Management here at UVA to have partnerships with instructional designers in the schools to create a program like this is just above and beyond anything that uh, we could have done on our own. Uh, so I hope the value of, of this sort of collaboration is not lost. Um, it's pretty, pretty awesome and incredible. Um, so that's that's what I wanted to add, and I'll jump back into the slideshow now, Gail. Thanks, Tricia. I, I, um, I, you know, really can't reiterate that enough. Is that um, we all both inform each other of what what we can do with this, what what we have, and um, the faculty came to us. You know, we called the faculty together, asked them what they needed, and my ability to work with Central um, ITS 
has been hugely important for, for the success for our faculty and for us to move forward with you know, trying to do things in Sakai that we um, need to do and to support faculty. And the, you know, this is something that can be for you know, residential faculty or adjunct or remote. Uh, this is something that I think all faculty really do need to have and at some institutions they have it, you know, we, we have it differently at our institution. And the the way we created it is designed so that they can do it at their own pace. It's giving them the context of what they need. Um, it's supposed to be just in time, but it's also um, something that they can go back and review. And they're not really quizzed on the content. We decided not to do that in the survey. We wanted feedback and we wanted to know what they what was helpful to them. And, uh, and the feedback has been really good, so I'll talk about that. But if you can see on that, on that last slide that um, just creating that so it doesn't look like a course, turning off, you know, I, I wouldn't have been able to do that without working together with Tricia. Um, and, and I just said, well, you know, we just we got feedback that we needed to make that look different because they were getting confused by the home page. So the ability to do that has been really helpful and we stayed in the conversation together for over, you know, for over a year. We just kept uh, working on it and I would show it and, um, and and just thinking about the possibilities was really helpful. And um, so we implemented this uh, this summer as a pilot program and we, the way we did that was we found out all the people who were teaching for the summer and we added them to the site. It was important to get the leadership and, um, and the deans and the different department heads in there and they, you know, we had a big meeting and I showcased this and everybody was very um, excited and positive about it and they, it was important that, that they saw that as well so they could see what they, the, what the, what faculty had, you know, the ability to do and access, and so everybody was very happy about this. And um, so I highlighted the feedback survey, so I wanted to give some. So in the feedback survey, faculty got in and they looked around, and and we had, the, you know, they liked the look and feel of it. Uh, it was it was simple that you know that we made those tabs on the left very clear to understand what would be there. We let them know the expectation was that they watch the videos and you know check out the resources and look at the feedback survey. It's not a um, it's not monitored in some of the ways that um, other institutions might do it. It's very open, but our faculty really appreciated that. They said that um, it was the finally a place where they felt like there was a community. So that to me was I find that one of the big successes from that, that they felt like they could come here and be connected to other faculty, ask questions, and another um, big comment was that they were getting all the information in one place because, and I think this is true at many institutions, information is here and there and all different places and it needs to be integrated and that is another huge um, implication that I think is important for faculty that they're, they're being overwhelmed it's a way to scaffold the experience and decrease the cognitive load for what's being expected of faculty with technology right now so it was our idea to bring all of this information here's what you have to do or here's the different technologies and here's how we use them and here's the other information that you might want to use you know some of it is research-based and some of its technical support, putting it all in one place, combining the you know the way the academic and the administrative components that are burdening faculty today everywhere we are. And um, and when I first started this, I thought it was because people were adjunct faculty, and um, I've I've um, showcased this at uh, our institution, and um, I went to the School of Nursing, and they were said, how can we get in this site, you know? And I said, well, it's pretty specific to our school, you may not, you know, they, they, they were like, this would be great if we could have something like this for our faculty. And now I'm at the College of Arts and Sciences and um, we're working, um, I'm in a new group called Technology Strategies, we're working to create something like this for our faculty because it is a way to integrate all of the information. 
and it's important to have the different partners at the institution working together on this so I, I don't want to put the wrong information I don't want to duplicate efforts there's not enough time for that and so working with Tricia to say how can I make this simple how should I do this what should be the content for this module um, you know we'd like to have an assessment you know the Office of Institutional Assessment in there we were working on a library one, one for the library as well. That's a huge one. Um, so that's actually that's actually in there. We have we have something for the library and, and one of those modules. So working with all the different places at the university to get the content in there that faculty need in one common place has been really cool that it could work out here. Um, we did want to also tell you that um, if you were interested in the technology enhanced learning presentation that we gave in um, the conference in 2013, uh, there's a clip, you know, you could, there's a link to that as well in our PowerPoint. I can't, okay, Tricia, I'm not, okay. Okay, so Gail, we have a, we have quite a few questions. Um, and I'll just start at the top with, uh, can you hear me okay? Yep. All right. So the question is, would you also be able to reuse a lessons tool for the home page of the site? And absolutely you could, Dave. Um, no reason why not. Uh, then we have another question. From a technical perspective, how many faculty were enrolled in this site? Gail, do you can you answer that? Yeah, we had about 200 this summer, and we have about 400 faculty who are probably enrolled now. I'm not there now, but that's that's uh, typically each semester we had around 300 people. This summer was smaller because summer is usually smaller for faculty, so we had around 200. And we had all the deans and, and uh, the marketing people, everybody was able to access that. Thank you. Uh, so hold on, I got... Um... I can't read any questions, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. If you don't mind, I'll just read them out to you. Um, or did you... Well, and then a, a follow-on to that was, did we create a special user role um, so as not to have them enrolled in the site and no there was no special user role I know the answer to that so I'll go ahead and answer it um, oh, I'm sorry that broke up I'm sorry could you say that again yeah I was saying that can you hear me yeah all right I was just saying that we did not create a special user role the faculty were enrolled added to the site as students so a course site was used and um, they were just put into the student role. Um, you know, of course, they don't see what their role is when they when they join when they access the site. So, um, but I think it worked fine. I don't think anyone was offended I by that. In. I had everybody in as a student in a student role, and they were fine with that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let's see. Did the usability testing provide positive results for the long scroll? Uh, in the lessons pages. Yeah, I mean, um, there was an issue. It's at a certain point we had. Um, I put a take take the survey. I had directions in the bottom of the scroll and scroll and at the top because it seemed like they couldn't find that. And um, I changed that. It may not be on the what you're sharing here, Tricia. It may be on a different site. But we did. We made the feedback survey at the upper right hand corner so people could see it. But they were, um, the long scroll was not an issue. It was that they didn't know to take the feedback survey. And I, I had different things, you know, just, just kind of silly things where I didn't call it feedback survey everywhere. So I went back into the front part here and said feedback survey and I changed that everywhere. And it helped them to see that they needed to do that. So another question is, how are you doing the sidebar on the right of the lessons page? And so um, what we did was we just used a table in the editor to create that um, column um, to appear as a sidebar. 
Yeah. And that was like, I got feedback uh, about that from my marketing department. They wanted something like that, and then I worked with Tricia to figure out how to do it, and then we did it. So let's see. Do you allow this as a joinable site, or is all your faculty enrolled based on their role at the university? Right now, we have been adding people in. It is not a joinable site. And that was just uh, what the administration wanted. It's not necessarily my my point of view, but that's what the leadership wanted us to add. They and we didn't we never take anybody out of the site. We keep them in, and they're they're always in there. So if we're updating things or we're sending announcements, they're going to get the most current information. But that's a good question, and uh, I think it should be joinable. Um, but anyway, that's that's how the leadership they didn't want everyone to be able to access it. I think they should have been able to. So. And then how do you advertise or engage faculty to use the site? Yeah, that's a great question. And, mm -hmm. and sort of along with that, do you have a majority of faculty who enroll? Um, they, we have them, we have, there's a couple things. So since we had the Technology Enhanced Learning Program, we've had a really nice uh, base of faculty who are sort of like our ambassadors, I, I would say, and they are very supportive. And many of those faculty have gone on to leadership roles at our school and are running programs. And so they ensure and encourage faculty they hire now to, um, to participate in, in the site. And another thing is that um, I, would, I would have in engaging different faculty in the um, usability testing. I think that's a really good way to um, promote the site and for to engage faculty. It also helps them to feel some ownership about the environment and they um, they engage in questions and discussions and they feel like they're you know they're a part of it and I, I think that word of mouth is really important. And I also worked with the leadership to have uh, webinars within our school promoting it and asking them to encourage faculty. And really, there was such a huge need for it that everybody was very interested in it. So um, that's how I would say it. I, we do say it's expected. We, I try to, we don't use the word required as much um, at our school. Um, but that said, they are, you know, they, we are keeping track of who fills out the survey and who's in the site. And the next phase is going to be, you know, ensuring that people do do these things. And, and I think what's going to happen is they're going to ask people before they actually teach a class to go through it. That's the intention. But the, in the pilot, we were just trying to get people to use it. But over time, it's going to be something that's Here's the site. When you get hired, please go through those modules, those types of things. And also, in-person meetings are important as well. Thanks for that question. So, Gail, Did I answer that? <laughs> yeah. I think so. Um, who okay. is responsible for maintaining this site for all faculty? In other words, adding and removing participants as they join and leave the university. So that's a good question, too. Yeah, um, and in my role, then I was in charge of that. Um, um, I was working with the registrar and with um, the marketing department to um, invite faculty and also to maintain it. I really didn't think we needed to take people out of the site. Um, that's I, I think it should be available because a lot of our faculty would teach one year and then not teach, you know, for another for a semester and come back. And if we've updated information, I wanted them to have access to that. Um, so it really was going to be how are we going to make sure that we can get them in there, but how are we going to make sure that they they do that? And I think that was going to be the work of the department head to ensure that that was required, you know, you know, or expected in some way. But it hasn't been an issue having that many people, and I hope it's a learning community too as well, like a learning place, a place where people can share their thinking or share their teaching strategies. It's just the beginning of what I think could happen there. 
Absolutely. Did you have anything you wanted to say, Tricia? Uh, no, not specifically to that. And I, we have a second question about how we set up the sidebar on the right side of the lessons page. And another question about in the forum, in the conference site, could we provide an outline of the contents of each module? So I guess probably, you know, what the topics were. And I think we can um, provide information about both of those, um, how we laid out the lessons page, as well as um, providing uh, an outline of the contents. Right, Gail? Yeah. The, um I, I think I had this, but I think they might mean specifically those are the right there is the what the different what, you know content area was, but what was in them we could we could probably do that. Yeah. Getting yes, prepared yeah. to teach was mm -hmm. administrative and academic things that needed to happen, like how do you develop your syllabus? You know, we had a form, we had a template for our syllabus. The measuring success was about the adult learner. And also, we talked about library services and okay, assessment, can, enhanced yeah. instruction. Sorry. Yeah, well, we can do that. So, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll definitely post more um, details about that in the conference site for our topic. Uh, so we have another question. How did you get the right-hand menu in Sakai? Okay, so that's the third time. <laughs> We're definitely going to to provide some information about that on the site. Do you ever schedule any time online for faculty synchronous discussions? Yes, yes. I didn't have those there yet because in the pilot version we, we were just trying to get people familiar, but absolutely. We, we have um, meetings with faculty and Blackboard Collaborate. Yes. And I like to try to do faculty spotlights as well. So um, we would probably record those and have those available. So by, by faculty spotlights, you invited faculty to speak on a topic and recorded that for others to view? Is that what you right. mean? Right. In the, in the enhanced instruction module, um, there was a faculty spotlight where a faculty member who taught poetry talked about how she used gaming and little games in her class. Cool. And we recorded uh, it. You know, we invited people on to do it. Right. And we have another request to um, see what questions were included in the feedback survey. Yep, we can do that. It we was can. very, it was pretty open-ended. It was about what did they learn about that and what went well for them and any any you know feedback or suggestions but we can we can do that I th it was going to probably evolve over time again as I said I'm not doing that right now but they we we wanted it to be pretty open ended and pretty specific to what what was helpful to them and um was there anything that they would like to see in the future you know yeah yeah Okay, and we also have a question. So there is no extrin extrinsic incentive for faculty to complete these modules. Um, I think it's it. What's going to happen? I think is that the when faculty get hired, they're going to be expected to go in there and and do that. And I think the survey might get more. Um, I'm not going to say like an HR thing, but I think it's going to be like asking questions to ensure a bit of understanding. Because we went with a an open, a more open approach. I don't think faculty like to be quizzed. I don't really agree with that method, but I think that they might end up going in that direction. I would think I would tend to say they could share something or create something and share it with the group. That's more of the way I would like to run things like that. But I do think that there are some questions that you could ask them. One thing I would like to ask faculty is, you know, if this is the first time or if you were a first time um, teaching, you know, user of this site and teaching at this school, is was this information, you know, is there anything else you needed to know about that we didn't address? So we tried to be very comprehensive. 
And and there was um, supplemental work, I assume, to introduce beyond the the recorded video modules for introducing and um, familiarizing faculty with the various tools in their site. Is that True. Yeah, there were there were we had two different types of presentation. One was a general presentation about what 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 was expected at the school or what was available at the university for different um, types of teaching and learning, or just administrative support. And then we also had demos about how to do things like how to create um, and upload the syllabus the way we wanted it to be created. At our school, or you know, how to how to use Blackboard Collaborate for online meetings. We had different demos, we, so we had presentations and demos. Right. Okay. Um, so this is a follow-on to the incentive for getting faculty to complete the modules. Um, how many actually have done completed modules, and and how many have completed all five? Do you have any data on that? Um, I left. Uh, we had the faculty go through it. There were about 150 to 200 this summer, and I would say more than half went through them. They're not all required to do all five. They were all. They're all required to do four of them. The ones who people who are teaching online are required to do all five. But that again, as I said, that was just piloted, and then I left the school this summer. So that. I'm sure they're working to ensure that that happens over the course of this year. That was a big initiative. It's a good point, though. Yeah, yeah. Good, good data to track. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we have another request. Is it possible to get guest access to this site or perhaps a copy of it? Um, I'm going to just forward to our emails at the end. If you want to just email me, um, I can, you know, sure, we can work on getting you information. I'm trying to forward this. <laughs> there it is. There you just go. email me. Yeah. And um, I'm happy to share and we can talk about that. Okay. We have uh, just a few more questions here, and I think we still have a little bit of time. So, um, do you make the faculty recording spotlights available to the public? Would love to see these. I haven't made them available to the public. I'd have to ask the faculty member about that. But it really is a very um, important point. I think faculty want to hear from other faculty about what's working or what's not. I'm running um, informal faculty groups right now in my new position and they really want the opportunity to hear and see and they want to see demonstrations of things of what other faculty are doing. So it really is a it's an important point. Yeah, it is. And it yeah. and it's a lot more meaningful when other faculty are actually showing what they have done, I think. Yeah. No, it, it is and they really value it. Yeah. Uh, what is the current use rate without having it as a requirement? You may have somewhat answered. I think right, yeah, I think right now it's basically a, a, it's been a resource. I think a lot of people who have gone through it, I don't think they've gone through it in as robust a way as they could have, but I think overall the feedback is really people are happy to have that as a, as a resource. Right now I think it's going to evolve into more of a, you know, this is what's needed when you get hired to go through this. But mm -hmm. that's not where we started. And that but I'm sure that is going to be where people want to take it. Right. And and how that's handled may depend on on you know your school <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, where I'm at now it would be very different how it would be handled than there. Yeah. So and are the slides available in the forum or somewhere else? So our slides for this presentation are available in the forum on the um, conference site. Um, so you should be able to find them there if that's what you're referring to. Okay, let's see. Do you have any plans to survey upper class students in a year or so, or so to see if they are noticing an improvement in faculty using TEL? or the faculty focus modules? 
I think I think the student experience. Um, yeah, I think that is a really excellent point because uh, students would complain about how the technology was used with faculty, and I think that that establishing a baseline with students about um, what's happening now in the classes and then after these have been implemented, that's a great idea. Um, as I said, I said, I'm not there now, so, um, but I think that's a really great idea because that's another way to measure um, whether this has an impact. So awesome. I think that's a great, great idea. Any plans to do a more extended and advanced modules for faculty who want to explore beyond the basics? Yes, the, and this is just the beginning of how to think about these things, and a lot of those needed to go more in depth. This was a way to, to have an overall snapshot of these things, and that the intention in building them was to continue um, bringing, you know, adding things in there with more in depth. Absolutely. This is just the beginning. Do you have a suggestion for one you would do? Right. Or does so anybody, if anybody have, um, is anybody else out there doing something like this, or are they thinking about doing it? I guess I have the question for the group. Yeah, and that might be something to post that question in the forums uh, for our session on the conference site. And I'm also seeing a couple of notes that our PowerPoint slides aren't showing up there, so I will make sure that they get there um, after our session. Thank you, Tricia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So let's see. Great. Um, so we're actually uh, at the end of our questions, and uh, we've gotten some great questions from all of you. Thank you so much for being active participants. And, yeah, um, thank you. This yeah. has been great. Um, love the questions, and we can continue asking and answering questions in the forums of the um, for our session on the conference site. Thanks to everyone for being here. Well, thank you, Gail. Yeah, thank you. I should say thanks to Christian. Thank oh, you. Pleasure. Yes, thank you, Christian. All right.